OK, I'm going to show you how to use automation and keyframes in Adobe Premiere when working with audio. So the example I'm going to show you is this animation here, and we're going to focus on the um, the screams of the uh, of the man and the echo and reverb, um, as you will see in this example here. So, all very gory, but um, I'm going to show you how I got the effect on the voice. So, let's just solo that in itself um, uh, without any effects on it or anything like that. So, it's quite dry, and um, so there's no kind of reverb on it at the moment. Um, but we've got a little bit of creative license here because it, it's kind of like a, a horror genre. So um, I wanted the, the voice to start off dry like that, but then increase with um, reverb and delay and sort of repeating, feeding back on itself um, to give it that effect. Um, now... What I'm going to do to show you how I did that, I'm firstly going to remove all of the effects, put everything back to how it was. Now I've removed all the effects. There are two ways that you can approach this. And Adobe Premiere lets you um, make a choice between either adding audio effects to clips or to the track mixer. Now, either way is valid. The way I'm going to show you is with the track mixer. So this is our track mixer window here, our track mixer panel. If you can't see that, you might be in a different workspace. So um, if you choose the audio workspace, that should show you what you want to see. Um, then you can see all of your tracks. Obviously, I've got quite a lot of tracks. Uh, I have labeled them all. So this is the track that I've soloed, just so we can concentrate on that one sound effect. If you can't see this section of the track mixer, then that might be because it's hidden at the moment. So um, if you make the panel a little bit bigger, just to, to see, see a bit more of it, drag it down a bit. Let's click this button here. There we go. So you might be able to see something like this. If you didn't know that this little arrow was here, then you wouldn't know where all these effects were. So it's just a small arrow there, show, hide effects and sends. If you click on that, it drops down these panels so you can see the effects controls. Now these effects will be applied to the whole track. So like I say, if you've got more than one sound on each track, then it will affect all of those sounds. Um, at the top here, this top section, you've got slots. And you can see as I hover over them, it gives the number. So slot one, slot two, etc. There's five of them. And then there's some send slots, which I'll explain what they are in a minute. Um, but let's just concentrate on this one first. So the top slot, it's, there's nothing there at the moment. But if I click on it, uh, or, sorry, click the little drop down arrow. Then it gives me um, a few options for effects. You might be familiar with some of these from when we looked at them in Adobe Audition. And um, the effect we want to start with is reverb. So I'm going to choose a convolution reverb. Again, we looked at that in the last session. Uh, it's the same effect, it's just within Adobe Premiere. Um, once you've loaded the slot, you'll see you've got a control down here. At the moment, this control is for the mix. And uh, if you remember from last time, I was uh, explaining about the, the wet and the dry mix. So the dry is 
if you're 100 percent dry then um, you won't hear any of the effect if it's 100 percent wet then you hear um, all of the effect we'll come back to that in a minute let's just double click on this effect here and as we double click on it it opens the controls for that effect and this just gives us a bit more control over what's going on um, I'm just going to leave the preset as default but the impulse I'm going to use massive cavern because we want a we want to simulate a really big space so we'll leave the mix um, actually at the moment we will put the mix to zero and I'll explain why in a minute and you can see when I did that it also changes it using this little dial here so just leave it at zero for now everything else I'm going to leave the same because it's it's supposed to be a very big space so I'll close that down and now what we want because we're not at the moment we've got zero percentage on the mix so we're not going to hear any of that effect um, but but what we want to do is slowly um, increase the amount of effect that we hear so I'm just going to resize some of these panels so we can see a little bit, little bit better what's going on you can see here that we've got a line at the moment that is for the volume um, and we can automate that with keyframes but there's a couple of ways you can do it you can actually record the automation by moving the dial on screen yourself but to do that you need to be in the correct automation mode so for this track that we're in now the automation mode is read if I turn that on uh, change it to write then any movements I make with the fader or any of these faders in fact any any of the controls for this track it will record those and you'll be able to play them back as automation so let's just have a go at that using this mix dial here as we play the track back that will have recorded the automation we can't see it yet because we're still looking at volume so if we change the keyframe type here there's a little drop down menu and this shows you all the different keyframes that you can view now we don't want to view clip key keyframes because we're using the track keyframes so all of these are track keyframes so this one is for panning um, this one is for volume and mute but the one we want is this one which we've just recorded which was the track effects one slot one convolution reverb Ch uh, change that to mix and you can see if we just zoom in a bit more it's recorded the keyframes while I was moving the dial that option can be quite difficult to get right in real time so um, I'll show you a way to just draw it in with the pen tool now I'm going to delete all these keyframes just so I can start again the way I'm doing that is I'm using the pen tool here and I'm just going to draw um, sort of lasso around all of those keyframes I haven't quite got them and then just put, press delete on the keyboard um, and then you can actually draw in some keyframes manually so again the pen tool works best for this so again we're starting off at zero percentage uh, after a short while we want to start bringing up that uh, reverb so there's more and more reverb being applied right to the um, crescendo of where that scream sort of ends that's where we want the reverb to sound the biggest let's just play that back so that's good um, that's kind of what I wanted but um, not quite there so what I thought about doing was um, there's a delay effect that you can use to create feedback and that will help 
the effect continue long after the scream has stopped. Um, so how I did this was I put a delay before the reverb. So I'm just going to move the reverb down from slot one to slot two. Then I'm going to add a delay. So delay and echo. I'm just going to choose a simple delay. Um, for some reason, I cannot double click on that and bring up the controls. But that's all right because we've got, we have got the controls here. And there's only three controls. Delay, feedback and mix. Um, if we set the mix to zero again, just to start with, um, the delay, I'm going to change that. It's actually at one second at the moment. And one second is quite a long time when, when we're dealing with delays. So I'm going to bring it down to just under half a second. So it's not 0 0.420 of a second. Um, or 420 milliseconds. And then the final parameter is the feedback. Um, I'm going to put that up to around anything around 40 to 50% is going to be pretty long. It's going to feed back for quite a while. So that's good. And then we just need to automate the delay again. So the mix effect on the delay. This time we're looking at the keyframes for track effects slot one delay and the mix control there again using my pen pen uh, tool slowly increasing that so that it is the highest right at the end of the screen um, and now let's play that back and see how that sounds So that's much better. You can hear the delay uh, going on for, for a long time after it ends. That's the effect that I wanted. Um, the only thing that I haven't done yet is to play it back with the whole track. And I can see straight away it doesn't sound loud enough. Now, um, Let's just have a look at this track mixer again. So at the moment, I've got my volume here on the track mixer just at zero. That's the default position, but I'm just going to boost it up a little bit. Now, what you have to be careful with here is if you boost it too much, it goes into the red and then we get distortion. So just to stop that happening, I'm going to put a compressor on this channel just to um, stop the volume going too high. So my dynamics control here, uh, tick the compressor module and I'm going to leave a lot of these the same. I'm just going to change the ratio to two. It's just a very gentle compression and the threshold doesn't really need to kick in until around about let's say minus seven decibels i'm going to leave everything else the same now let's play that back Now, the issue we've got here is that the keyframes for the volume are overriding any any uh, changes I've made. So we just need to go back to the track keyframes here. Yes, so there are some keyframes there. We just need to lasso them, delete them, and boost the track up again. Oops. Put it quite high in the mix. <laughs> So that's it. I hope that was useful.